Hello, everybody. How's it going? We're going to start here momentarily. Hey, you guys. Hey. Did you guys hear that? Okay. All right. I think I'm ready to start, Mike, if you're ready to start. What? This is normal. This is what this is every week, guys. This is just how it always is. We're all this is how we run every episode. We've done this on this show almost a hundred times, and the other show almost three hundred times. So weird. Don't don't you tell people about that. Do not let people go back and watch that. Pro I mean, they probably can't. I'm just embarrassed. Oh, good. I'm glad they can't. They can hear you now. Um. All right, Mike. I'm I'm gonna count us in. You ready to go? <laughs> Apparently, I should have. I should I'm have started moving my mouth and not make it. I should have. Uh, <laughs> uh, are you ready? For, I'm gonna count us in, and then we're gonna start. And I'm gonna. We're gonna go whether you're ready or not. In five, four, <laughs> three. Hmm. Hey, you guys hear me? Start cheering now! Yeah, yeah let's get this over with. <laughs> Woof, woof! Hi, I'm Mike Minotti, and I'm a Nintendog. Hi, I'm Jeff Grubb, and I am a Nintendog. And we are the last of the Nintendogs. Today, uh, the, the, Nintendo, the Nintendo Mario movie is still making a lot of money. We're getting an Indie World Showcase tomorrow, and we are uh, fantasy booking theme park rides. Is that really the term for that? We're, yeah, That's sure. When we're that, talking about it, it is. It sure is, yeah. These aren't for, these are just, um, these are just uh, work fantasy theme park rides. Though. Yeah, these but are, I'm gonna shoot shoots. with you. I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot. All right, I want you to shoot straight. I'm yeah. gonna work the work into a shoot. <laughs> and it'll be great. Uh, Jeff, how's it going? Uh, it's going pretty good. I'm uh, I am enjoying the NHL playoffs, even though my team isn't in it. A lot of the teams are very good, so that's been fun to watch. I um really enjoyed a new video game, Dead Island Two. It's a Strange. good game that is not going to amount to much more than like what you. Like, imagine a good version of Dead Island 2. It's exactly that game and not anything more, but it's actually a really fun diversion right now. It's the now. best case scenario for what that probably could have it been. It literally huh? absolutely 100% is the best case scenario. I'm having a very good time with it. I, the, the one big bug that uh, did, that kind of derailed me was the biggest bummer about it. But otherwise, it's just it's really good at like letting you go and, hit, and hitting zombies in the head with like axes and stuff. Um so yeah, I'm just like I'm gonna I'm in a pretty good mood. Work's going great. We're like figuring a bunch of stuff out. Uh, it's fun to work with people who like and, like know what they're doing as opposed to you know with that old job where they were just a bunch of buffoons. <laughs> I'm just joking. Love you, Mike. I don't know how are you doing. I'm good. I was uh trying. I'm tr you know I beat Resident Evil Four three times now, and like a couple of those are on the new game plus. You have a problem mode, which is real easy, real fun. But uh, so like I'm trying to to get. S plus rank on professional mode, which is the hardest mode. You have to not do new game plus, so a fresh save. You have to, you, so, you know, in professional mode, it's harder, enemies are more aggressive, and there's no auto saves or, like, checkpoints. You just have your saves from the uh, typewriter, and you can only save 15 times the entire game. So wow. it's this whole thing. I was, like, kind of attempting it for a while there, and I didn't make it to a place where I was comfortable saving yet. So I have so far made... No progress, uh, but I'm um, getting there and learning things. I'm watching things. Uh, you you can like use some like the special weapons you unlock and some of the like armor and accessories you unlock. So those things will help. And essentially, if you can get to a point where you can upgrade the one like uh, some machine gun that you get as a reward for playing yeah. one of the other modes, you can unlock you can unlock like an, the the exclusive upgrade for is infinite ammo. Once you do that, you're kind of sitting relatively pretty. So it's really the first third of the game before you can do that. That's really difficult, the people say. So you just kind of have to learn that and get through it. So it's kind of you're are it's the way you're playing it. Basically, you are doing a run from one save point to the next, and you're trying to maximize sort of like what you have left over. And then if you, you don't feel good about it, you got to like be like, OK, I'm not going to actually save. I'm going to do that not over. Really? It's because it's, it's it's more so. Everyone says you should not use up that first save because again, you can only ever save fifteen times. So like, I'm not, I don't want to use that first save until 
I'm like relatively close to maybe the, the like uh at least the first time I see the merchant. Uh some really aggressive sure. ones are like, oh, don't yeah. save until you fight the lake monster. I'm like, no, that's okay. Yeah. But at, at the very least, I I, I need to wait till I see the merchant for the first time. Like even that seems to be like the easy one. People say like if you're a coward, but you know, just getting through the village fight was, took me a while. And I kind of finally have that down pat. Cause it's a they you know, the guys say, Hey, you want to kill that chainsaw man? Cause he drops a green emerald. So I was like, okay, so I'll kill him somehow. And then run around like an asshole for like whatever, three minutes until the bell rings, <laughs> please. I was getting stuck, too, because then after that, right, you're in that little secondary village area and there's one of those pig head men and he was whooping my butt. And I'm kind of I was watching a video now and the other guy's actually just kind of running away from him. I got to like, you know, I'm pretty good about like I should run away from people. I got to be even extra if I can run away from people, just stun people, do whatever I got to do. Don't necessarily fight them. Yeah. Whenever I am playing a game and I need I'm like, why am I fighting everything? I got like. Be like Mike and just run past most. Be of these like things. Mike. It's like that. Be, you do the Mikey and just run past these assholes. You know, what, well, you're just wasting your time here. So you don't have to fight them. No, yeah. A lot of times you don't. And it's like I was I did that in Dead Island too last night. I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna run past there this. There you go. This yeah, I'm proud of you. You're and learning. I, I came back and I had to fight him, but I had gone back to the house and got all my you know my stuff all fixed up, and so it was a lot easier. And I'm like, oh yeah, this was was stupid. I never should have fought these guys. Just come back and fight them when you have to, or when you when I'm powered up. Um. Yeah, uh, I, so a lot of good games. It's just going to get busier, though, Mike, because it's like, yeah, even if we don't think Redfall is going to be good, and who, who, who the fuck knows? You know, there's, who knows? Who knows? We'll just judge it when it's here. Even if you don't count that, there is a lot of stuff coming up. I mean, uh, Jedi Survivor here real soon. Very soon. Very, Very soon. soon. Yes, and then um, Street Fighter VI in, is in June. and uh, what Diablo else? and Final Fantasy XVI yeah. also in June. Nuts. Man, that is maybe the most right. stacked June ever of all time that is crazy right. if any like smaller things like advanced wars very soon yep. I mean, even like you know this like disney's kart racing game came out today it's like all right i want to check that out people are like like playing space a little bit of it too. Yeah, i was playing it i know you did too so we'll i know i was actually going to play it right before and it's been oh, stuck. you lie it was but yes i lied it's been stuck on initializing yeah this, this entire time on my steam deck. it's been stuck on that for quite a while even on normal pc to be fair but, oh really uh, not, okay not forever i wonder but, if, I, I mean... it's probably what this is is it's, it's probably building shaders and i bet it's gonna take forever on the I on think the you might be right thanks but good looking game yeah i uh yeah I'll, I'll, you know i still I'll, I'll have questions about it we'll talk about it and what you've been playing so um so so yeah i know it's it's gonna Man. be busy I'm, I'm very much looking forward to advance wars um although i have not beaten resident evil 4 i kind of had to set it aside to get some time in dead uh, island 2 for work uh but i'm i'm gonna go back to it I mean, yeah you gotta I'm, be you gotta beat at least once it's oh yeah such for a, sure it's so well, much fun. i mean it, it's great because i love doing all these extra runs there's even like more you can do but that first playthrough where you are just playing it as this like action adventure movie with like these horror vibes and it's just this roller coaster with these with this incredible pacing and all this fun moments it's so good it's just you know i i went back into my top 100 games to kind of figure out where to put it and right now i said we're on 15 like i have it really high up there i really like it jeff i forgot to tweet i don't know about you i'm tweeting now no i tweet like i do every week right before i'm about to start i don't know what you guys just act like this show's a mess every week or something you're the one who's getting around hey everybody watching live thank you so much if you are watching live Please hit that thumbs up button. Lots of uh, super chats already. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah, if thanks, you send everybody. Send in a super chat. We will read that during the show, uh, and it you know it helps uh, support us. We don't put that money into the show. I mean, we use it for like you know our knickknacks. But thank you, we do appreciate it. Yeah. What would that even mean? There's some people like we put that money into the show. I don't it's, even know it's, what they it's, mean. It, they're, they're ashamed that they make money from doing stuff. And I'm like, I'm like, like please saying. don't put it back into the show. That's stupid. I'm giving you this money. <laughs> to treat yourself like that's the whole idea here you make stuff mm -hmm. that i like i want you to have money to go eat a burrito like do just that keep upgrading your microphone no matter what that <laughs> means no matter if it's actually beneficial just keep like the buying irs new is going to audit you because you spent ten thousand dollars on microphones in one year and you have <laughs> do you make music no you should make podcasts this is dumb the irs thinks you're dumb <laughs> so yeah uh, yeah i don't know 
Mike, you want to do right, new? Uh, did you see uh, Nintendo did just announce new Xenoblade Chronicles 3 DLC? I don't know if you want to bring that in. Oh, uh, is this, this like another this like ugly looking companion character? The game already the has like 30 of those companion characters. I don't need more of them. Seize the future you desire in Xenoblade Chronicles 3, future redeemed, coming 425. This original oh, this story like scenario is available exclusively via Wave 4 of the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 expansion pass. Here's the trailer, and then the trailer. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's fine. This is because, like, I know people like uh, the golden oh, something of Torna. All okay. right. I want you to get, don't look. What Sega Genesis games do you think are coming <gasps> to Nintendo Switch Online in April? Yay. I oh, will, really? okay, so one is a very early Sega Genesis game that was an arcade port, and it's uh, kind of a strange arcade game. Not, I mean, it's like not your typical, like, arcade game. Oh, that's weird. Was it, it's Sega, like first party? I think so. Yeah, it's like trying... pre-Sonic and stuff. Yeah, was it Flicky? Good guess, Mike. That's right. Well done. Really? Yes. Okay. okay uh, thank you. Hey, here Brian, is... Thank you for joining the Lincoln tier. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. The, okay. The second one is, um, I think it's a platformer, and it's a mascot platformer, but not Alex Kid and not Sonic. Is Restar not on there yet? Is it Restar? It's not. It's not that. Um, yeah, I think that's already on it there. Is, the cover is very 80s, and it has a kid in a leather jacket. Oh, it's um, a Kid Chameleon. That's right. Kid Chameleon. That game apparently has like a million levels or something ridiculous. Uh, the third one is, uh, is that fucking Game Freak? Did Game Freak make a Sega Genesis game? Is, is it this, Pulse Man? Don't tell me it's Pulse Man. It's Pulse Man. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, number four is a uh, it's a fighting game, and it's the biggest one. <laughs> oh wait, the Street Fighter Two on Genesis. Special Championship Edition. Yes. Okay. Well, sure. Fine. I have. I think I have other versions of Street Fighter Two on my Switch already. Uh, a lot of that is like okay, fine, neat. Pulse Man, let's go. That rules. That's awesome. It's a great mm. game. Uh, what is Pulse Man? I, I feel like I can't place it. 2D action platformer. The guy, uh, it's it's just a, uh, yeah, it's just a really fun kind of running gunny, but platformy, almost Mega Man yeah, style. Take a look here. Kind of thing with more interesting movement mechanics, I, I guess. I wish Kid Chameleon was good. Uh, oh yeah, Pulse <laughs> Man. Kid, yeah, Kid, Kid Chameleon is one of those games that, as a kid, I wanted to like. I kept trying to convince myself I liked it. Yeah, I same. The idea I would play at my it. friend's house, and it was like. It was like Kid Chameleon. This looks like this is what a real Sega Genesis game is. Because as a Nintendo fan, I'd be like, "Oh, I want to be like fair to this." And it's like, "Nah." Um, Paul Smith, Game Boy. Hey, Game Freak's really good at making games. Why? Oh yeah, they made they made so many good games that aren't Pokemon. Um, I this is definitely one of their best pre Pokemon games. Oh, I'm I mean, sure. Yeah. Right, and then like post Pokemon Drill Dozer is really up there, and I bet we'll get that on Game Boy Advance. You can Fair also enough. play Pulse Man in like 300 different ways in your house. Yes, okay, Sean, yeah, definitely. Sean, I could I definitely pirate can. these things. I yeah, definitely. But like Street can. Fighter, I'm what, but I don't legally own it already on here. Actually, I might. I forget if it's on that Sega Genesis collection that I have. I don't think so though. But the, uh, uh, I, I think that's cool. And the image they have here, it's Street Fighter 2 apostrophe colon Special Champion Edition. What the hell? All right, I don't know. Maybe I mean, that's... that was like cool to have back in the day if you had apostrophe a controller. I don't know. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah everyone's big. I think everyone's big complaint with this version is the music and the sound, which whatever. So they should do uh, Drill Dozer HD. Game, speaking of game for games, Drill Dozer HD one. using the uh, HD Rumble for uh, the Switch. Let's go. They need to do there that. You go. Come on. Uh, yeah, that's this is pretty cool. Uh, I'm like always happy when it's like, oh yeah, they could add more games to the set anytime. And here they go. It's not like we're like, when are they going to announce more Sega Genesis games? We're sort of we've reached a um, an equilibrium with those older platforms where it's like, yeah, they might add more. They might not. Who knows? So it's exciting when we get something new. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is good. Uh, there's yeah. And you know, their Genesis collection is actually pretty good now. Yeah. Uh, there's still a few things missing. A Pulse Man was definitely probably one of the bigger ones, honestly. So that's pretty cool. I'm sure if I looked at the list, I can still find some ones that I think are like egregious absences. But that's good stuff. I'm glad to see that. Hopefully we get some uh some more coming soon for Game Boy Advance. Uh did SNES hasn't had some drops in a while. No, yes they did. They had that 
uh, pool game. That's yes, right. right. That right. The kind Which of, was actually like better than I well, thought one of the better was, pool games a, from that era. I mean, a, I love that era of of bar games uh, that the got turned into in video that games. Were immaculate. Yes, yes exactly. I yeah, and I uh, any sort of like weird sport uh, made for a fun video game during the eight bit and sixteen bit area uh, era. Uh, like just having hacky sack and what like California games or whichever game that was. I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, sure, I'll play hacky sack in a video game. It's pretty stupid. I'll do that. All right, let's get to our scheduled news stories here. Sure, uh, there is an Indie World Showcase tomorrow, April 19th at 9 a.m. Pacific. For 20 minutes of reveals, announcements, and updates on indie games for Nintendo. Jeff, I- I'll just say up front, like, I don't have expect- specific expectations, really. I just, I'm not really sure what those would be. Uh, do you? Is there something you think is coming here? Are you about to say the word Silk Song? I'm not. I was gonna say definitely don't expect Silk Song. Come on, that's it's too big for an indie world. That's that's. I don't think it's ever gonna be back in an indie world. Um, I agree. I, I, no, I don't have any expectations because uh, these indie worlds are really hard to pin down in terms of what they might have. And um, I, I you, you know, they've ended a couple times where it's like, here's like the big game for the indie world, and it's like, oh yeah, yeah, okay, that makes sense, I guess. And it's like, you know, not something you ever would have guessed beforehand. Like an um, oxen free two, and it's like okay, yeah, sure. right. And I, I have no issue with like any of that. It's just like not something that I could have predicted, and I feel like that's probably what this is going to end up being as well. Um, yeah, I think like Nick G is like, hey, maybe Pizza Tower. Yeah, sure, ports like that. I mean, make isn't sense. Vampire Survivors not on Switch yet? Vampire Survivors would make a lot of sense. I think maybe if they have some special circumstance, uh, because they had such a good relationship with the first game, maybe. Uh, super massive, not super massive, uh, uh, but but the Hades two, like Hades two early access on on Switch, I think it's like a super point, giant. Point, is that what it is? Super giant. Thank you. A point one percent possibility. I think Nintendo is probably like, okay. what's early access? Um, but you know it, that game made so much money for Switch that I think they they, they would probably at least hear them out if that's something they would want to try. Super giant probably wouldn't even want to actually uh, do that though. So yeah, I, I really don't know. I have no idea what to expect. How about you? No, yeah, like, uh, yeah, it, I really don't know. I mean, what I really expect are, like you say, a couple announcements of, like, games that just haven't been on Switch yet coming, then, like, a bunch of things I never he- heard about or probably never will hear about again. It's not passing judgment on them, but maybe just not really my thing. And then, like, at the end, there will be, like, the one kind of, like, oh, this is, like, the new announcement. Oh, this this thing. Either, like, sequel to Beloved Indie Game or, uh, like, you know, new game from Beloved Indie Studio. Here's one. You know, they announced that Braid Remastered a while ago, and it was supposed to come out like two years ago, and we just never heard anything about that. You think, like, what's going on there? I think that, um... You think it's just a part, a case of the Artur, Arturing? Yeah, I think What's-His-Name has just gone off the reservation. It's, like, too busy being mad at people online to... Busy peeing in jars. Too, bu- too busy peeing in jars, yeah. B- big, big old giant jars of piss. Uh, it's basically his entire life now, yeah. I like Braid. I like Braid, I think, as much as you like The Witness. Yeah, I, I have never, was never able to get into Braid. Um, I don't know what it is. But really? I, yeah, I love, like when it first came out? Yeah, I think it was I like tried so it. novel. Like, whoa, it's like we're, 2D games are maybe big. <laughs> yeah, right. And it's like, oh, man, this is this is important. This is saying mm-hmm. something. And I was like, yeah, it I, I bet important. it is. Let me try it. And I'm like, eh, I don't know. Um, I, you know, I mean, That's not to say it's a bad. I just didn't click with it. But The Witness, I, I fucking love that game. You love the I like the witness fine. You really I love it. it. Yeah. You're smarter than me, I guess. Yeah, I, that's exactly what I was trying to say. For sure. Uh Jeff, the the Super Mario Brothers movie is uh still making a lot of money. Uh a lot headline. of money. Yeah, 92 million plus in its second oh, weekend. That's bananas. You know, that's more yeah. than like a lot of gigantic movies making their first weekend. Yeah, uh, domestic total right now. Looking on a box office mojo, it's at three hundred and uh, basically three hundred fifty nine million, and then worldwide seven hundred and ten million. You know, billion dollars seems very likely. Uh, you know, I don't know where the ceiling is. I don't know if it's going to be like um, you know Top Gun Maverick style money. Like, I don't know if it's going to get to like one point five billion. I don't know if it's going to pass Frozen Two for the all time worldwide best uh, animated movie, which is also around that like one point five billion total i think i'm not sure yeah uh it is doing very very well i actually got to see it again this weekend um for uh, my niece's uh, uh birthday party it was actually at the movie theater it was fun we uh they, they like kind of like give us the arcade area 
Uh, so we're kind of cool. playing around there. That's fun. Then we then we kind of had a row for our whole group at the movie. It was just kind of neat. You know, it was one thing when I went on opening night, it was like me and my two brothers, and we went like this late showing so there wouldn't be too many kids. It was almost more fun to just go in the middle of a day on a Saturday, just have all the kids in the world there and just let them have fun. Like they're not, you know, I'm not saying they're like jumping around screaming during the movie. They're being sure. good, but they're also reacting. They're having a, you know, a good time. They're getting up and dancing in the aisles at like during the credits. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Uh, and you know, I, I, I don't like to say, oh, well, it's a kid's movie. So that's the most important thing. Cause you know, I think good anime movies, uh, appeal to a broad audience, but they sure did do a good job of appealing to that kid. Demographic. Yeah. I, th- I mean, I think they made a movie that is, uh, going to be played on repeat and a lot of houses here very yep. soon. Just ad nauseum, like absolutely. Uh, and you know, that's, uh, that, that is a viable uh, and you know it's a valid option for them in terms of making a movie like yeah you can make something that is um it has higher aspirations but you can also just make what they make and there's no reason to say that was the wrong choice because uh, other than hey i might have liked it more if, if they made a different movie uh I, I liked it fine and it made a lot of money so i mean you know we talked about like oh you know sometimes you make these animated movies that can transcend and feel better yeah, a lot like, of them do. Uh, like you know, like uh, Sp- Spider Man into the Spider Verse, well, or yeah. that, that, or that um, Puss, Puss in Boots movie. Those, those movies don't make a billion dollars, Jeff. Yes, yeah, they definitely do not make a billion. Um, I think that uh, you know, a lot of Pixar movies do make a billion, but they, they're Pixar. Pixar Illumination that's a whole is not different Pixar brand thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So it's, even then, uh, not lately. I don't know what the le- like. Right, true. Aside from like when they do big sequels, like Incredibles two. Right. Well, um, I mean, with the last animated movie to make a billion dollars probably was a an Illumination movie, right? It was probably probably the last Rise Minions, of, Rise of Gru, was like, the Rise of Gru. I probably made a billion, but that might, if it didn't, it's because it did kind of come out during the COVID era. Let's right see now. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I um, I'm I'm excited about this because I think this is a very not, cool. Nine hundred thirty nine million. Okay, so right so there, just missed a billion. Right. Uh, this is a um. A, a, a franchise and IP that deserves it. It has been a part of people's lives and a very important part of people's lives for decades now. And this is the uh, sort of that being realized on an even bigger scale than ever before. And then we're going to get a lot of Nintendo movies. And I think that's right. And I think they go to Luigi's Mansion first. Uh, Donkey Kong is a spinoff as well. Uh, let's get both of those here pretty quickly. It probably is, it's going to take a couple years because I bet they were hedging their bets a little bit. Um, but let's go, yeah, let's get those, and then just start going wild with all the other stuff that makes sense for Illumination to do, and by that I mean, don't please don't make a Zelda movie. <laughs> you guys were talking about that on the Bombcast, like, oh, the Zelda movie, and, like, you know, there were, like, these nice ideas, like, oh, maybe it can be, like, a almost like a Ghibli thing, or, like, a light gug will can do it, but, you know, it, it that movie is going to be made by either an animation company of a scale of Illumination, or it's going to be made, like, as like, you know, a Lord of the Rings light kind of a thing. Uh, there's no chance it's going to come out of some like artistic thing where Link is a silent protagonist and where like the backgrounds look like watercolor. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think there's no chance. But there's not really a chance. Yes. There's exactly. not really yeah. a chance. I, I mean, <clears throat> I could see the idea of Miyamoto, Miyazaki, let's work together, let's do like let's finally do the collaboration that like will blow everybody's mind across the world. And in that case, I bet they both like root each other's poot up to the point where like, we could do something super artistic. And that does have something like does have a long period of silence. They get spirits and, within it. Yeah. Well, yeah. They they, found fantasy spirits within it. Like, they they say, definitely hey. could spirits within it. Yes. That's what I think. I think they could talk themselves into do some, doing something along those lines. Uh, but no, that's not what's going to happen. They're going to make a broadly commercial movie that is going to be probably like the last most popular fantasy thing, which at that point will probably still be, um, you know, Game the of Thrones. The Grindelwald. <laughs> the crimes of Grindelwald. Exactly. Yes. They're going to kill three babies to one up that one. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, explain why Hitler's co- like that, why the wizards were cool with Hitler or whatever. Um, yeah. Well, I was a good. Well, they were cool with them, but it was a good thing they didn't stop. Exactly. That's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah. I whatever zelda's zelda's gonna happen i just you know illumination please don't um I, this movie making a lot of money is is this is a everything is working out exactly how i like the best case scenario for nintendo illumination universal the games are all selling more all the mario games are selling really well there's a b- bunch of sales and stuff recently 
but obviously a lot of that is people are excited about Mario from the movie and they're going home and they're they're buying games. And that's exactly what Nintendo right. wanted to see. Yeah, and that's why, like, you know, people are like, how could they not release a new game? I, I guess I get that. Maybe that would have been even better. But there are still so many $60. Even some of them are on sale because of this. There's so many Mario games on the shelf for people to get. Even a lot of people don't have all of them. If they see this movie and they are suddenly in the mood or so inclined, there's going to be a Mario game for them to go buy. Um, Jeff, my important question for you, though, regarding that Zelda movie is what pop song are they going to play when uh, there's the training montage when Sheik is teaching Zelda how to do a swirly whirlwind of his sword? Yeah, they'll just um, I'm like, like what? Oh, you spin me right <laughs> round, baby, right <laughs> round. Like the yep. beginning of Wedding Singer. Exactly. God damn it. Did you you said that like there's a Min Max thing or something where Somebody from the movie is like, ah, oh, at the end of the Mario movie, instead of the superstar theme, the they originally wanted Jump to be the yep. song playing. I'm like, oh, that will uh, sure would have been bad. That would have been, uh, that would have been a bridge too far. Right now, I think the music selections are stupid and whatever. I mean, they're they are bad. Clearly, they're bad. Yeah, but it's like cool. I, they're not they're not sensical. It's like here's yeah. take on me. Why? Right, because it was the '80s. That's it. That's all they thought. And it's like, holy shit, that's dumb. Like, that's just dumb. That's how much yeah. you thought about it. But a uh, jump being the, like, climax movie song, just go fuck yourself. I'm so no. glad. Brian Tyler, the composer, argued and won. Thank God. Okay, I got it. Because, like, I mean, he clearly lost an argument with the take on me thing because instead of his donkey Kong country mix he probably had to give up a bunch of those to get probably did to get compromise yes to, yes the compromise cool I, uh, I, w I wonder if they ever tried to cut that one amazing part where like you know he is in the mushroom kingdom and they do like a medley of the mario songs like you know maybe that was gonna be poker face or something i don't know why not <laughs> Yeah, sure. Uh, who gives a fuck anymore? Yeah, who gives a shit. You're gonna face uh, it. I hope. I really hope they have the all Mario soundtrack on like the Blu-ray. They won't, but I hope they do. Hey Jeff, Pokemans. There's a new Pokemon. This uh, it's gonna be in the Hidden Treasure of Area Zero DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I got a picture of this little guy. Uh, you know. There's a lot of Pokemon these days I don't really like. I like this guy. He looks like if a Chaos Emerald was also a turtle. Yeah, look at this little bitch. Yeah, I don't I don't hate him. Apparently, like the description says he looks like some kind of legendary Pokemon I never heard of. Uh sure. but yeah, this guy doesn't look bad. I'm always actually I always forget that they actually do just have new Pokemon in these in these DLCs now. That kind of seems like antithetical to what the 0.5 Pokemon releases used to be. But hey, that's a good way of getting people excited. Yeah, uh, new Pokemon are, uh, it's always still fun uh, to like, I'll look at it for a second and then move on with my life. That's where I'm at. But it's, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I, don't, I wonder how the true Pokemon fans, Pokemon, Pokemon uh, fans feel about it. But whatever. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Do you think it, it do you think it evolves into to a, a bipedal, like humanoid? Ah, uh, God, I hope not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, also too. just becomes a fighting type on two legs. God. Uh, Point of game industry biz. Nintendo wins a court battle against a site used to pirate its games. Uh, the storage is ordered to pay platform holder 467 euros. God knows how many dollars that is, Jeff, but can't <laughs> appeal the, same these days. the decision. I mean, you know, we see a lot of these uh, Nintendo lawyers very aggressive. They went after another site uh, that, you know, people are using for piracy and uh, they won. I don't know if you have any takes about this, Jeff. Be careful with your uh, hideous human face, Kirby, by the way. Yeah, my bad. Uh, I uh, My take is, oh, no, that's the site I used. You got him. Now I don't have to search for any of the rest of the sites. You got him. So, <laughs> uh, damn they it. They did it. They ended piracy. You ended piracy. Congratulations, right Nintendo. Damn it. Right before Tears of the Kingdom came out, they Darn. did it. They're safe. Yeah, exactly. That's So uh, that was a good, good move on your lawyer's part. They won the war. Shoot. All right. Yeah, I guess we're going to all pay for everything going forward <laughs> like normal. Uh, hey, Nintendo Switch Online members, from April 20th until April 26th, you can download and try Star Wars Republic Commando. Uh, this is the next game that's kind of just available, the full thing, for a limited time. This it's is kind of an so interesting weird. Choice here. Yeah. This is a weird one. It's if so I been weird. coinciding with, like, uh, you know, uh, May 4th, right, then it would make right. a little sense. I mean, it's a, it's a good game. It's, an, it's a... Decent remaster of an old game, though. Right, uh, and it's like the one that they made improvements to over time. So they're probably like, "Hey, we can like reintroduce it to people now." And uh, 
Yeah, sure. I mean, there is a Star Wars game coming out. It's Jedi, you know, Survivor on other platforms. Uh, so maybe oh, they're like, them. yeah, this is they're going to really steal. The we got Star Wars, too. <laughs> it's like, uh, it, it actually should be Force Unleashed, which I started playing because uh, the Force Unleashed is our game club game. And, uh, you know, a lot, I think a lot of people are playing the Xbox 360 version. I played that one already. So I'm like, no, I'll play that weird Wii PlayStation 2 version that recently got ported to Switch. It's not bad, actually. It's uh, way I better than it was right actually be. surprisingly cool. Surprisingly fun. Uh, like, I assumed it just wouldn't have any of that physics stuff. That's actually all there. So, like, the dismemberment oh. isn't there, but the physics stuff is still working. So that's that's neat. But um, that would almost make more sense than... Look, I like Republic Commando. Actually, I wanted Republic Commando to win our poll to be the game club game this uh, month, but it lost out. But that's I, 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 I like uh, I like Republic Commando a lot. I re I've really enjoyed playing it. Yeah, I like I always like that little uh, dev uh, insight on Republic Commando because they have like the the four yes uh, troopers and they like introduce them like this is the one who's good at hacking and this is the demolitions expert. And it turns out that like they all do those things exactly the same, mm -hmm. but they just wanted to like kind of give you that impression. So you would think like I'm going to send Sparky over to set the dynamite or whatever. Uh, yeah, I mean, and effectively it's like, yeah, that's basically the same thing as them actually being good at that because if you buy into it, then great. And if you don't, that's then right. If you if you miss that line because you weren't like we're weren't paying attention, the game's still going to work fine. That's that's ideal. That's a really good call. That's exactly right. Uh, well, all right, Jeff, that actually uh, does it for our news stories. We've got some super chats. Well, why don't we talk about that? We did have uh, Xcore, one of our Lincoln members, just say, hey, hey, he's been a member for seven months. So thank you. It's Xcore. Appreciate yeah, you hanging you so out with us. Uh, but uh, yeah, we got a bunch of other ones here. What are people saying? Yeah, let's see. Let's start here with, uh, I think it's the first one from Erhan Q. What is the best DLC for a Nintendo game? Daisy in... Uh, Mario Strikers. Yeah, that's right. That's correct. Yeah. He's right. I downloaded that content no and then the game got better. Yes. Just no hesitation whatsoever. There you go. From Way D better than a motorcycle for Link. Well, yeah. Now, if Daisy could ride on a motorcycle, then... Uh, from well, I don't D know what people would actually say, because people like, people like the DLC for Xenoblade Chronicles 2, like the story campaign. People like the, uh, the one for Splatoon 2, that extra campaign. People yeah. like that. That's true. A lot of people do like the Xenoblade DLCs, right? Golden Country of Torna or something like that. Yeah. Uh, from D, have you guys ever played the Yakuza games? I just got into them recently, and they're so good. Perfect for the Steam Deck, too. Uh, well, there's a big, like, number thing over here. I don't know what this is. Like, it's like a one birthday. It's just one, and there's a bunch of balloons on the Super Chat, so. It uh, says, celebrate the first Super Chat. From oh, D. okay, that thank makes you, well, yeah, D, thank you very much so much for your first super chat. Um, appreciate it. yeah, we really do appreciate that. Uh, I, I'll, I'll say that it's uh, 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 something that I've tried a bunch of times now and I can see the appeal, but I um, I get derailed pretty easily from games that are very narrative heavy, and that's not to like slight this game at all. It is, a, there's a lot of very fun stuff going on. I just uh, I, I lose steam and then I don't, don't come back to it. I did put Yakuza Zero and Like a Dragon on my Steam Deck. And I'm like, I might just go to right to Like a Dragon and start playing that um, again. And I, I, you know, I probably played about seven hours of that and really enjoyed myself. Uh, but it's like, yeah, I'm going to go back to that and maybe start over and actually get into it. They're good games. How about you, Mike? Yeah, I never actually played them really at all until Like a Dragon. Uh, and I was enjoying that uh, quite a bit. I just kind of fell off it because that came out when this new systems came out. Yeah, there's, there's so a lot going to, on. To kind of juggle around. So it's hard to like really laser focus in on this 80 hour RPG thing, right? Right. But I, I thought, you know, the story was actually really good. I was, the, the combat, it, it was certainly slow in terms of like where, you know, how many fights have I even done at this point? Barely any. Let's kind of, I kind of wanted to, to move a little bit faster. But I always hear Xenoblade, or Xenoblade, um, Yakuza Zero is a really good starting point. Yes, it really uh, is. So, at some point, I am going to go and try that because I do think I will actually like it more with the sort of beat em up brawler combat than even that turn based stuff in Like a Dragon. I really like the, the uh, turn based combat in Like a Dragon. It's absurd and really fun. It is fun. It is really fun. But like, I wasn't really getting enough of it yet. That was kind of my problem at that point. Like, I was, you know, hours into it and it still felt like I wasn't. I feel like you fight could much. like walk every 10 feet and get into a fight at certain points of that game, but maybe I'm maybe I was a little bit later into it. Well we have different expectations for what random battles are. That is like. completely fair. Uh big Jimbo Ryan, uh he's showing up. He's he's a avid watcher. He mm -hmm. says beep beep Well you 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 become a Sony pony. 
So he's probably excited for you. People got mad at at you because uh, did, you uh with their comments i didn't see oh yeah because uh, on game s mornings you like dare to say that like maybe some random governor or senator uh shouldn't uh try to launch some investigative investigation oh right that's what they're about come um, on yeah. that's so yeah, absurd the tinted sunglasses I'm, on now jeff oh i'm so sorry that the uh the senator from north dakota trying to protect <laughs> he, he literally said the 239 game games industry jobs in north dakota was like oh we gotta investigate sony for exclusives it's we really think exclusives should be like illegal what the fuck is everybody smoking all right good talk uh big jim o'ryan says beep beep ba beep vum hmm hum <laughs> oh that'll oh See, I told you he's happy with you. <laughs> you activated his happiness circuits. <laughs> and it's, I can just imagine doing like little honky hand signs and stuff. And uh, 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 Big Thanks, Jim Jim O'Ryan follows up with, look, fellas, I reheated some apple pie for you two. Jim, Thanks, no, Jim. I don't like apple pie. Jim, you know I do. I don't like apples. Jim, come on, Thank man. You, Jim. Jim knows. Jim knows what I love. Jim, Jim, Jim also knows what I like for breakfast. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, Brian was a new member. We shouted him out already, but thank you so much, Brian. Hey, these new members are popping up in the viewer activity now here on YouTube. So that's something. That's nice. Big Jimbo Ryan's back. I think he might be drinking tonight. <laughs> well, that's, I think Jimbo, Big Jimbo Ryan drinks every night. Yes. Big Jimbo Ryan drinks every night. I want to see a Zelda movie. Get Tom Holland and Zendaya. They're good <laughs> actors. <laughs> I'm sorry. They're this, got. This is spelled terrible. Yes, they're, they're, I'm gonna I'm gonna read it as it's written. Get Tom Holland and Zendaya. They're got actors and Chris Pratt as Ganon. Mike, do you use an iPhone, an Apple device? What is all this Apple stuff? Yes, I have an iPhone. Is this like some gotcha? Like, oh, I guess you don't hate Apple. Then. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right. Very good, Jim. Thanks, Thank Jim Ryan. Thank you so much, Jim. Good good, good luck with the uh, CMA. Yeah. Um, it's X core says, Hey, Hey, when you join them as a, a member, we also shot that out of that shot of that, but thank you so much. X core, uh, the uncharted wolf, Jeff started talking about passing. I think he meant pissing. Jeff started talking about pissing in jars at the exact moment. The McDonald's worker handed me my food. She gave me a weird look. You're I, welcome. I started that in, in Jeff's defense. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, uh El- McDonald's sounds amazing. I've been McDonald's in a while. I have McDonald's all the time because of the kids. And you know what? It's pretty good. I, I like McDonald's just fine. El Grug, will Tears of the Kingdom have an expansion pass like Breath of the Wild? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. I'm surprised they haven't announced it yet. Have yeah. they not? They did. La- at this point, for Breath of the Wild, they did announce it. This time, they're just like, we know these fuckers are going to pay. Like, we don't have to right. get them now. They'll be so happy to pay later. Uh so will Tears of the Kingdom have an expansion pass like Breath of the Wild? Yes, it will. I feel like it would uh, be announced by now, but I need my Link Switch t-shirt. Um, yeah, I, th- they will probably have it as a separate announcement months after. It's very similar to what happened with Elden Ring, I think, where it's like, hey, we're going to do a whole other like relaunch of this game. Honestly, what's probably going to happen here, Mike, is the Zelda DLC gets announced not too far off from when a Switch follow-up hardware is coming. And they're like, yeah, get buy the DLC for the Switch or buy the upgraded, updated, all in one package with all of the bells and whistles for the new system. And it comes with that DLC. So I can see that. That yeah. makes sense. Uh, that does it for the Super Chats for now. I'm going to hand the show back over to you. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Well, what we're going to do now then is we're going to take a break. Then we'll come back. We'll get into our topic here. We'll talk about Nintendo theme park rides. It'll be fun. I am going to use the restroom. I'm hitting the button. Thanks, Mike Geezy. We're working on it. I'm constantly thinking about it. We're feeling really good about it, right? Uh, especially these past couple of weeks. Uh, the trip was really good. It's what we needed. I thought I'd say giant bomb. And then, of course, Mike did. Mike, hey, listen, bringing on Mike was absolutely a huge thing. That's been... Because uh, I, yeah, I always, like, I always remember um, thinking... Like I would listen to Giant Bomb, and when Dan joined, I'd be like, "Man, Dan Riker and Mike Minotti have like they occupy a similar space where they say things, and everyone gets mad at them, <laughs> but everyone really, everyone really enjoys getting mad at them. It's like a lot of fun, and so it's like eh, it'd be, a, I think that'd be a fun fit. So I'm like, I thought this for years, so it's very fun to be able to make that happen. 
And that's kind of like where I want to be with Giant Bomb stuff, where it's like, I think this would be a fun thing to make happen with Giant Bomb. How can I do it? And now, like, I'm, I'm at a point where everyone's like, yeah, just do stuff. Let, let's just do stuff. And uh, kind of ask for, don't ask for permission. We'll ask for forgiveness if stuff doesn't work out. So it's uh, it's going well. Like, we're in a good spot. Feel good about it. I think Summer Game Fest is going to be like sort of a a big exclamation point on on this uh, return to form. And I uh, kind of can't wait for it. Like, it's been begun planning it. Can't wait. We'll have some lockdown playing, I'm sure. It's going to be good. <laughs> I hate to say it, but somehow people get mad at you too, Jeff. Yeah, they get mad at me, but they don't enjoy that. That's They're just legitimately like, God, you're so... Why do you talk so much when you don't know what you're talking? They just get mad at me. They why like do you getting do mad that? at Mike. What's that? Yeah, people why enjoy getting mad Why do you do that, that Jeff? Because I, I just... I, I gotta feel like, like I... Eventually I'll get to it. Eventually I'll get something right. Uh, remember when during Robo Match, me and Dan at the same time made that joke about the water not being like Mario Sunshine? Yes, I do. And I was just like, it's yep, incredible. This is exactly what yeah. I expected to happen eventually. <laughs> One brain cell share between you all. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, the same they're going to fuse like in Dragon Ball and they're going to become like super obnoxious person. Are you ready? I am. No. Bring it back, Mike. All right, well, actually, I got to open up this thread. Still initializing. It didn't, man, <laughs> you'll get there someday. <laughs> <clears throat> I think it's probably broken, but whatever. Right. I'm just going to okay. let it go. I got something in the throat. Feel it. <laughs> as soon as I start talking. <clears throat> and we are back. Jeff, I asked our community this week, what would be their dream Nintendo theme park ride you recently got to go to super nintendo world which at the moment is pretty much really a, a super mario uh joint that's right um, the, the one ride that they have in hollywood is that mario kart ride that you got to go on and that look that always made sense if you're going to do one nintendo themed ride oh yes should probably be a mario kart ride and then if you maybe think a little beyond that a donkey kong style roller coaster donkey kong country that also makes sense a minecart thing and that's being built in Orlando and in Japan. Uh, Japan and Orlando also have or are going to get a kind of slow moving Yoshi ride. So that happens. But otherwise, that's it. It's just those three. There are rumors of maybe some more Nintendo stuff coming, uh, especially in the Islands of Adventure Park in uh, Universal. We don't know what exactly Universal Orlando. I mean, we don't know exactly that on tail. But yeah, do you do you kind of think about this now? Like. Are there any specific rides or ideas that you have that you want to see happen? Yeah, I've thought about this a little bit, and it's um, I, I want to be like be clear, like I'm not going to think about it in terms of logistics or making it sure. work or making it so there's not a ton of lines. Here's just like my pie in the sky idea that I think would be really cool. I'll tell you why it will or won't work. Yeah, no please, I, yeah, please. I think I honestly already know why it won't work, but um, I think it would be cool to just integrate Animal Crossing throughout the park. And it would be over like here is where you can catch bugs. Sounds ambitious. Oh, yes. and and here's and here's where you could do a fishing mini game. And here's where you can uh, you know visit uh, 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 Isabel and things like that. And um, what what you're describing would have to be like that weird Star Wars hotel that they have in not, uh, it, I, Orlando right, right. now. Like, I, I don't even mean that immersive. I don't mean that immersive. Just like little stations all well, throughout the other things. And it's uh and like may, I mean I, I would say maybe animatronics but probably probably not it I don't know people it, in horrifying costumes probably people in horrifying costumes yeah exactly and that would be fine but it's like it, they have this sort of idea all I mean this is Super Nintendo World right now where it's go through these mini games for Mario stuff the the lines are at, you know during spring break. 45 minutes for all these little mini games that do last a couple of seconds and right. then you're done. And that's kind of the problem. And then you right. right. And then that's... you take the key over and to, to, to Bowser Jr. and you do the Bowser Jr. Bowser Jr. fight, which apparently is a lot of fun, but we didn't we couldn't get the three keys, so we didn't do it. Um it's like I so they already have some ideas like this, and I just think Animal Crossing would be like the really out there one of like it's massively popular, but it wouldn't be in it, it wouldn't necessarily make for an obvious ride. I think integrating into the park would be very cool. But that's again no. You know, if that space is unlimited and all that other stuff. Now, now I'm wondering, like, what if you had to make Animal Crossing just a ride? It probably would just be like what that Yoshi ride is. Just be like a pleasant little slow moving ride with some scenes from like, here's you're in Isabel's office and oh, look how much paperwork she has. Yeah. Like, oh, look at Tom. Look, he's juggling money bags. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Like that. 
You can make it like a, like, like a fun house, like a, 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 a carnival fun house. Just go room to room and it's different characters and stuff with the rooms all weird. Sure. Yeah. I may have even said this before, but uh, in Shanghai Disneyland, their parts of the Caribbean ride is, is, is much more technologically advanced than the classic ones, like kind of obviously. But like it's a boat ride still, but the boat can like kind of like m has a lot more range of movement. It can sort of turn, kind of go forward and backwards. I think it's still on like a track. But it's not just like the slow moving boat ride just going down this one path. I think if you kind of took that and then did a wind wicker kind of thing instead. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, I mean, this 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 this, this Pirates of the Caribbean ride even literally has moments where you like kind of go underwater, just like in Wind Waker, and like it it, it already gives me big Wind Waker vibes, the whole thing. But that'd be very that'd be, cool. I would yeah, like that a lot. The, the King of Red Lions. Uh that'd be really neat. That's I my would be dream. A big fan of that. Plus, it would all look like Wind Waker, so it'd be gorgeous. Right, and that's like an aesthetic you can count on to last through all of time. And mm -hmm. it would just always, it's always going to be beautiful. I mean, you, you wear that Wind Waker shirt. I'm like, God damn, that just looks so good. It just looks so good. It looks good. so good, yeah. So it's like, man, you could just kind of count on that to last forever. All right, let's see what the community I think about this. Uh, if you're watching live, if you want us to read out your ideas, if you weren't in the Discord community, you can do a super chat. Or you can do a super chat about anything. We will also read it before the show's over. E Zipsa says, Birdo's Tunnel of Love. <laughs> or second uh, best and most obvious thing in F Zero F Zero Roller Coaster. That uh F Zero Roller Coaster is interesting. If you wanted to just make like a high speed roller coaster, F Zero is certainly like what you could base that off yeah. of pretty easily. Yeah. That's more of like almost six flagsy, but you know, Disney and Universal do things like that, too. I mean, Universal does just have here's the Velociraptor coaster. It's the Velocicoaster. There's like a kind of theme around it a bit. But ultimately, it's roller coaster. Just a roller big, coaster. Yeah. You know, the Incredible Hulk. It's the roller coaster. Yeah. Like, oh, you're turning into the Hulk. And now it's a roller coaster. Sure. They can do that. <laughs> One up versus CPU says, I just like a nice Kakariko Village themed chill out section. You could get this is like you said, you can get your fortune told. Sit back on tree stump chair and watch the cosplayers drink some lawn lawn milk and keep the bottle. Knock some apples off the tree for a snack. And of course, there should be lots of cute kitties to play with, like in Twilight Princess. Man, what you guys want would require such a strict reservation system. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And like, yeah. I mean, I think it's um really the ideal thing here is kind of how they have Hogwarts laid out. Uh, or whatever it is, whatever the fuck it is, uh, the Harry Potter street. They have Hogwarts and yeah, they have Hogsmeade and uh, Diagon Alley um, and Diagon Alley. Right. So yeah. it's like kind of do just kind of <clears throat> people do want to just be immersed in these worlds, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that is a very good version of that or a very good example of that. I think doing that with one of these Nintendo properties would be pretty neat. And it, you know, again, we just walked through it and it, it and like and it was like looking around and it's like it's it's still busy. But it's not nearly as busy as a Super Nintendo World, the newest new thing. So it's like, of course, I think over time, it's like these things could make more sense. But, you know, the Harry Potter stuff takes up a lot of space. Right. And that is true. It's like right now it is like, well, how is this working right now? And you know, there, there does come a time like when Galaxy's Edge first opened, it was like a nightmare just to even kind of like get in there and exist in there. And now it is just like, oh, yeah, this is just another part of the park you can walk into. Uh, it's it kind of almost like look forward to that almost just as much as the normal opening uh i'm gonna i'm gonna I have a question but i'll save it for like once we get past everybody's in case someone else like kind of brings it up just well, remind well, me you're gonna, are you sure you're not gonna forget because i'm really curious what this question is it's just uh, what nintendo property would map because i've never done it to rise of the resistance that's the one you say is like still probably pound for pound the best yeah, ride in the world it is but rise of resistance is so like that ride system is so bespoke adaptable because you're basically just in a vehicle that has it's trackless, so it just has a free range of movement. Right. So you can, and that's kind of like the the great thing with that ride system. Like, there's a Ratatouille ride and a Mickey Mouse ride that uses the same technology. Okay, right? so it's just so the, that's, Ratatouille. It's, like, it's basically just an open platform. Star you can do Wars. anything with it. Okay, you can uh, do anything with okay. it. Okay. Uh, Casual says, "I want a Wario Land four themed Wipeout style course." <laughs> that would be a lot of fun. We uh, should just run that the illegally. Lawsuits. We should run yeah, a, a, sure. boot, a bootleg. Make Dan run it. Yeah, war, yes, yes, Dan is the host. Yeah, yeah. War, Dan Reichert's Wario Land 4's Wipeout course. Uh, He's been using that arm vagina. He's limber. 
<laughs> yes, he has been. He definitely has been using that. Yes. <laughs> Jeremy Biff says, I ride the mimics, uh, the opening of Bayonetta 2, where you're standing on a jet plane. Uh, I don't I, I barely, man, I, Bayonetta 2 is one of those games I play, Jeff, and I remember almost nothing about. I remember that part. That part rules. Analia says, plumbing water slides, is that already a thing? It should be if it's a not. You know, uh, it would be cool if they also like did like a Nintendo themed water, water park. park. I'm, I'm, you know, Mario, Mario Brothers themed water park. Sure, why not? Yeah, with the I mean, pipes and stuff. Sunsh uh, Mario Sunshine's right there. Yeah. Posp says more an experience than a ride, but a Guardian laser tag based survival course set in the Breath of the Wild Hyrule would be cool. Well, now that makes me think of like if you did a ride like uh, Men in Black or. Uh, to Buzz Lightyear. And these are rides, Jeff, where there's like guns on your vehicle so you can shoot. Oh, fun. What if you had Link's crossbow training, <laughs> but as a ride? Honestly, the way the way the Mario Kart ride works, you could do that with that. Sure. Oh, there you go. Uh, it's, it upsets me that you know more about that than I do, just from yeah. virtue of being having actually been on it. Yes. Well, you're you're you also don't want to be spoiled, so you haven't been watching the stuff, right? That's true. I haven't. So, no, yeah. on that. Yeah. Everything else, like yeah, sure. But the ride, I don't know why I'm trying to stay relatively spoiler free on. Uh, Vision 49 says soaring, but you are gliding over Hyrule. Jeff, you ever been on soaring? I uh, no. I mean, no, is, it, so is that some sort of drug? No. <laughs> yeah, that's a fallout <laughs> drug. No. Uh, <laughs> well, it's less, it's kind of like a simulator, but instead of just being in like a car or like a vehicle, it's like you're on a hang glider. So you're basically like on a dangling seat and your feet are sort of dangling and you're kind of being moved in front of this IMAX screen and it looks like you're sort of flying over. Okay. Like monument, it's it's actually very relaxing more than anything else. It's very pleasant. It's a very popular uh, Disney ride. Yeah, that it's, sounds uh, very, very cool. Good. It's very good. So if you did that, but instead of hey, you're soaring over the Grand Canyon and this waterfall, you know, you're soaring over Death Mountain and Long Lawn Ranch. I wouldn't hate it. Hey, I mean soaring, like yeah, we we just made a really giant version of Link's gliding uh, sail thing. So there you go. Uh, Chaos Buckaroo says a burlesque. It's a small world style ride featuring Nintendo waifus. Barring that, a wild roller coaster based on Metroid's timed escape sections. OK, um, I don't know if I have any comments about that first idea. That second one's interesting. What if you made a ride that was just an escape sequence from a Metroid? Like, with the, with like the thing going on. That's a great you, idea. You know, it rem so. In uh, Disney's uh, Hollywood Studios, that used to have the great movie ride, which had themes from a bunch of movies. And one of them was Alien. And it was like kind of at the end when it's just Ripley and the Alien. So like that alarm is going on, which is that same exact vibe. Right. And I've always I've always enjoyed that. But Alien was so good at alarms, man. Even in Aliens that whole time, it's just like real smoky. And there's that red siren the whole time. I don't know why, but that actually does translate into theme parks really effectively. Yeah, I, I, I mean, honestly, a lot of the rides that I did at Universal, I'm like, I could see easily this just turning into a Metroid escape sequence. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could, uh, like, uh, Mummy, is that what Mummy, you're thinking of? I was thinking Transformers. Uh, no, the, Transformers. The, like, that's just like, because, like, when they you sort of go through the um the physical stuff, when they're going from scene to scene, it's uh the, like that transition. It's like, you could just paint that, basically, and, like, <laughs> they make that look like a, a, a space station falling apart. Uh, Hail State says, it's not my favorite property, but Star Fox would fit in perfectly. The straightforward ride uh, would be a four-cart R-wing roller coaster full of barrels and somersaults built around defending the edges of the park, launching from the Great Fox to hide cues. The Nintendo Switch would be a dark ride slash AR motion sim that projected AR into screens that show a 360 camera feed from the actual park while simming a Star Wolf canine fight. Um... Yeah, there's a lot you can do in uh, well, maybe the Star Fox thing here. Star Fox, I feel like, is one of these series that might actually benefit from getting a movie. Like, that might revive the franchise more so than a new game. Like, yeah, I feel like it's the kind of thing where they could really sort of reset the expectations. And it's be like, no, it's about these fun characters and, and their world and all this cool stuff. And now, don't you want to, like, see more of this world? Let's do more stuff in the Star Fox world. And Yeah. Velocity Prime says, a ride where you are eaten by Kirby and you explore the infinite largeness of an elder god's interior. 
I think that was kind of a Rick and Morty episode. No, that's, that's most Rick and Morty episodes. Here's our second Tunnel Love answer from Laser Wolf. It says a fire <laughs> emblem Tunnel Love. Are Tunnel of Love's actually real? Have you, have you ever seen a Tunnel of Love, Jeff? Or is that just a thing from cartoons like Quicksand? I've seen your mom's ass. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I, I think I was calling her butthole a Tunnel of Love, but I don't know. Uh, wow. Uh, we can move on. Oh my God. We can just move on. Well, um, uh, please. <laughs> That's sexually. <laughs> uh, I, 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 honestly, I, I, I've only seen Tunnel of Loves, I think, in sitcoms. So yeah, right. sitcoms are cartoons. I don't cartoons. think they exist in real life. Yeah, I, I mean, the idea is like what you're on, like one of those swan boats, and you yeah, go through a swan boat. You go to a dark tunnel, and you make out, and maybe get a handy. I don't know what goes <laughs> on in there. Uh, for some reason, I don't want to be like, no, I've seen one of those, but I swear, I'm, I'm sure I'm just mixing up my life with TV. I'm sure I'm just doing that thing where like, yeah, I saw someone Homer TV. Simpson and Margin one. Yeah. <laughs> my face. friend, Homer Simpson, he's right. He just went right ahead of me. My friend, Homer, he's real. <laughs> uh, let's see here now. Tink says, FC or roller coaster with the music blasting in your ear, like the Hollywood rip ride rocket, please. So. That that's a good another good point for F Zero. There's uh, multiple theme park roller coasters where they have like speakers right where your head's resting, so you can listen to music. You can even really synchronize the music really well. You can do that with some F Zero music, especially like F Zero X style guitar heavy riffs. That could be pretty cool. That'd be awesome. Doctor Suss says Animal Crossing. It would be like it's a wonderful world. I think. But it's a wonderful world. He means it's a small world. But uh, it'd be like it's a small world. You enjoy a leisurely stroll. No, maybe he does mean it's a wonderful world. You enjoy a leisurely stroll through an island. You see all the cute villagers in their homes. At the end, it costs eight thousand, representing the crushing amount of debt Tom Nook places on people to live <laughs> in a remote village with no schools, no hospitals, and no roads. Okay, I do think he means it's a small world. Octa says, real life WarioWare with tons of arcade games, pinball, consoles, Ooh. portables, whatever. You have to run from one to one. Yeah, that's good. Completing mini games and challenges, sprinkle in some real life activities, and you got a winner. Yeah, micro, set of micro mini games, micro theme park rides. I, yeah, I, I really like that idea. Be family chat that says, I want a ride where Wario just steals my wallet. <laughs> that's just going to Disney World. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, Let's see here now. Fish and Love says an Advanced Wars themed paintball field with paint matching the color of the main nations and fog of war activated. Jeff, you ever do like paintball or uh, what's the other form where it's just like little pellets? airsoft? Airsoft. Have you ever do that? I've never done airsoft, although I've seen a lot of TikToks about it and it looks very fun. I want to get one of those ghillie suits where people apparently can't see you even if you're like three feet away. Um, I've done some paintball in the past, but a very long time ago and never anywhere like a, like us. We did it like in the woods, not like a serious course. Um, but I would like that. I think that'd be fun. And I think you could theme that stuff in a fun way, too. I had to do airsoft for my friend's birthday one time. It was one of the least my least favorite things I've ever done in my life. Wow. What what was wrong? Well, it hurts, Jeff. It turns out <laughs> well, you get, don't like to pain? get shot. It hurts. And there's not much of a game aspect to it. Because, like, you know, you shoot a person, they just have to tell you. So sometimes they won't. And if you get shot, you'll be like, okay, I'm shot. And then they'll just shoot you anyways. Uh, it was this. It sounds like worst. an experience developed specifically to drive you crazy. It does, yes. It's, it's it basically everything I don't like. Yes, think like, that would, like, give it. you anxiety and make you frustrated yes. and make you yes. mad. Like, yes, that's what it sounds like what it is. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. It's like, okay, well, obviously these things can't hurt that much. If there's just, like... Places where people go to pay money to do it. Like, uh, sure. No, it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Being hurt is part of the fun claim. But I, that's not very fun to me. I'm sorry. Uh, Alex says, Diddy Kong's Jungle Cruise to build out a Donkey Kong country area. We always get DK and Mario stuff, but it'd be nice to get a slower tour of his world instead. That'd be fun, actually. Um if they had yeah, like that Donkey Kong Country section, they had a second ride. Some right, kind of a ride that just goes ride. like underneath the minecart section or whatever and stuff. Like, yeah. 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 Oh, I love when rides intersect, Jeff. I love yeah. when you have all the uh, that motion going on. That's always good stuff. Yeah, motion is the is the lotion, is what I say. Motion is the kinetic energy is the theme park terminology. Ah. Like when you can see rides happening around you. Uh yeah, it's potential energy, but sure. Yes. Matt Rare Monkey says, Pilot Wings, I want to be shot out of a cannon. Well. That actually 
people do actually do that in like circuses. They get shot out of a cannon. I mean, they're not like getting propelled by gunpowder. I assume it's probably just like. I think there's probably I think there's probably a spring inside. Yes, yeah, I think there's a spring, spring platform, and then the the gunpowder just goes in the top and shoots out the top, and then they actually go out of the pipe. What what do you call? I mean, the the, the spout the barrel. The barrel, sure. I mean that's correct, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. barrel. <laughs> if that's what you want to call it, Mike. <laughs> you like heard this be like, oh, okay. whatever. You're like, wow. Well, I, mean, I guess. Yeah, I mean, listen. Uh, Chrono Bound says, technically more of an attraction than a ride, but an interactive fossil fighters dinosaur excavation exhibit. Nintendo does what the Smithsonian does also. <laughs> why did it? Why did it? Fossil fighters take off, Jeff. I, if I was twelve. I would have been the biggest fossil fighters fan <laughs> in the world. I don't remember. Oh no, I do remember fossil fighters. Oh yeah, why? This is such a weird thing. Yeah, I think it's, it's because it looks like with dinosaurs. Right, it looks like a shitty um. What's the Pokemon ripoff? Digimon. It looks like a shitty Digimon. I thought you meant Yokai Watch for some reason at first. Yeah, it does kind of. Look yeah, like it also looks like Digimon. a shitty Yokai Watch. Yeah, that it probably actually was. Uh, okay. Next is uh, Snubkin. He says, "I want some kind of Mario Sunshine ride, or preferably a whole Sunshine Land. The game already has Pinna Park, so draw on that." Everyone gets their own fully featured flood to play with. Everyone <laughs> just gets a flood to shoot themselves into the sky. Uh, and of course, there's 240 blue coins to collect. Well, now you lost me because nobody had fun collecting 240 blue coins in Mario Sunshine. Uh, Mr. Boris says, Platoon single player levels lend themselves nicely to a roller coaster ride. And people ride in inkling and octling shaped cards as they zoom through giant calamari rings on an ink rail track. And of course, passengers should be sprayed with ink for the duration of the ride. Uh, you know, dueling coasters are kind of a fun thing. If you're going to do a dueling coaster, Splatoon might not be bad. You Maybe you can even do some technology where, like, on the front of the ride vehicles is one of the rollers. And, like, you have, like, the tracks light up so it looks like the vehicles are rolling paint onto the tracks as they go. That's huh? fun. Yeah. That could I, be neat. I, 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 for dueling coasters, I was thinking, like, you would just make it feel like a dogfight from Star, Star Fox. I thought that would be cool. That would also be cool, yeah. Yeah, you know, the well, the, uh, the first idea for a Star Wars ride before they did Star Tours in Disney was just a uh, some kind of like Star Wars dueling coaster. Or I think maybe it was just like like you would go up the lift hill and everyone would vote on light side or dark side. You go on one of two different tracks, depending on it. But then they went with the uh, simulator. That's thing. a bad idea. I agree. Gerber says if see if the lady uh, Demastra, I don't never really know how to say that. Demetresque. Demetresk, like that mommy mommy crowd are yeah. willing to put their money where their mouth is by making a <laughs> giant uh, Doshin the Giant attraction, which is just a massive yellow foot that presses down on you. Only do this if the cleaners are getting paid a king's ransom. I mean, I don't think those people wouldn't be stepped on by just anybody, Jeff. I don't think you could have Doshin the Giant step I, on them. I, I don't, You said that out loud. I'm like, that sounds nice. That sounds pleasant. <laughs> well, like, look, if we the all... foot is the same size as me, it's like that the the weight would be spread out enough that I would mostly just think that would feel good. All right, then. <laughs> Screaming Madden says, besides the obvious answer, which is make a ride off of Mute City slash Big Blue from F-Zero, here's my pitch for Rusty's real deal roller coaster. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Rusty is running a new baseball roller coaster, and the ride attendees must haggle Rusty with donuts and other tactics to pay for a cheaper ride. <laughs> oh, no. You think Rusty would be able to handle DeSantis? Oh, uh, no. He would crumble instantly. <laughs> <laughs> he would just be like, yes, he would. He would, be, he would like be destroyed by him and then still vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> Big Tony says. Donkey Kong Country's my cart ride. Well, do I have good news for you, <laughs> Big Tony? They are building that ride. You're going to have so much fun because it actually looks amazing. Um, if you haven't heard me talk about this before, where this the, the thing this ride's doing is what looks like the track that you're on isn't the real track. The actual track is kind of below that. So it's able to do things like make it look like you're jumping the gaps and stuff. Right. Like you do in Donkey Kong. Yes, Country. I love that. It's going to be really neat. Team Mansur says, I want a ride that is themed on the Me franchise. A roller coaster that has the front in the shape of a me head. This sounds horrifying. And the face <laughs> changes to a random me from users who have subscribed to NSO. This way, it's possible for one day the me could be Mike's me. So you could hear for the first time someone say, I rode Mike Minot. All right. 
Look, look. people have rowed the Minotti, all right? <laughs> don't make me say it. And they're going to say, I don't want to hear it. Well, d- don't say these things. That's right. You are all asking for this, literally. Yeah. Your mom rode Mike Minotti. Uh, <laughs> Jump Matt says, a Waluigi dark ride. Make of that what you will. Uh, Jeff doesn't even know what a dark ride is. Yeah, let's so. let's try explaining it for the 30th time. It's just like a ride that's indoors, basically. So that's dark, so you can light scenes up. So like um, that terminal like, velocity or whatever it was from Cedar Point. That's more of an indoor coaster, because, OK, that's not the only qualification. I know what ride you're talking about, but they're generally slow moving rides. Also, like they're, they're generally not roller coasters. They can so indoors coaster and bonus. boring. OK, uh, all right. <laughs> so that Mario Kart ride you did was a dark ride. OK, I, I think I have a pretty good idea at this point of what it means. But... Uh, Transformers was a dark ride. Yeah. Yes. Jurassic Park, not a dark ride. Right. Yes, of course not. No. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I get it. it. I, for me, I would struggle to explain it, but at this point, I know it when I see it. I mean, the problem is like basically everything. It's like RPGs in video games. Everything's kind of an RPG. Yeah, it definitely seems well, like these but there ideas. Are things that are yeah, pure RPGs. Right. There are pure dark rides. Like if you go on Peter Pan's flight, but then everything's a bit of a dark ride. Uh, bench bench JC says a Xenoblade ride in the vein of Soren. Here's Soren again. Wow, big we just fly audience. in and over all the major environments from all the Xenoblade games and have 40 effects throughout. And the awesome Xenoblade soundtrack is playing. I think you should just fly around Pyra and Mithra's cleavage the entire time. Hell yeah, it'd be that's bigger than Mount Everest. Yes, anyways. it'd be like the Millennium Force, yeah, <laughs> huge mounds. <laughs> Huge mouth. <laughs> Clink says, all these rides sound great. What I really need now is a cheap, cheap lazy river that I can use to float from one to the next. You ever go on a lazy river, river Jeff? Yeah, of course, a, I love lazy pool. rivers. I, man, I, yeah, I do love lazy rivers. That is just the best. Yeah. It's, like, it's a great it, concept. Like, you just, like, you can lay down or you could just sort of, like, actually just, like, sit in the water and just sort of, like, be drifted a- you don't have to make any decisions. You just sit there and exist, and it takes you where you're the going. The decision is like, all right, am I done? Because yeah. it's usually multiple entry and exit points. Yeah, it, it's like it's like a it's like a park ride that could never end. You could just keep going. Yeah. you could just do that all day if you want to. They won't stop you. You live in there, like that could just be your legal residence. All right, this is okay. This is from Keyworks. This is gonna be interesting. No ride, interactive shows, Pokemon experience where you go into a lab. And have a professor teach the guests about the world of Pokemon using Musion, think Tupac hologram, and special effects. <laughs> Experience ends when someone has chosen to pick a starter and everyone exits to a gift shop where you can purchase your first Pokemon. This sounds a lot like the wand experience at Harry Potter. Uh, land has multiple areas of tall grass where you can interact with your purchased Pokemon and capture others. Main attraction would be a Pokemon gym where guests are ushered into areas with room for spectators to witness Pokemon battles play out in real time using special effects and Musion multiple times a day. Best players are selected to go against a gym leader and actor in battles that rival the anime. This is interesting because like that's a very pure Pokemon experience. It, we know Universal is going to do Pokemon stuff and like they can go so many directions with that. They could just make like a carnival that's Pokemon themed like, hey, instead of Dumbo, go ride the Pidgeots or whatever. Or they could... Like, just, like, be a little bit more thoughtful. Like, here's, like, a ride with Pokemon. It's, like, pretty well done. Or they can, like, go really hard and trying to make, like, a real, like, Pokemon experience. Kind of like what their pitch is with stuff like Harry Potter, where it's not just a ride. It's, like, this is, like, where you can be Harry Potter. You can buy a wand. Yeah. You know, all this stuff. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how hard Universal goes with that. Yeah. I I think there's a lot of potential with Pokemon, but it's... uh... There's tons of potential. Yeah, I I, I love the. Uh, can I ask what's the portmanteau for musion music fusion? Uh, using music is it a? It, I don't know. Maybe it's already a uh, Pokemon uh, Pokemon thing. I don't know about. But he again, he says think Tupac hologram. So that's all I'm thinking. Right. Yeah. I think about Tupac holograms. And I think about that time uh, Kanye bought a hologram of uh of the Kardashians' dead father for them for their birthday. Remember that? I don't remember that, but I'm gonna look into that. it now. And I was like, "That's an interesting." How would you feel if that was your birthday present? 
Or oh, as their dead relative. Scared. They brought him back to life as a hologram. Scared and probably probably pretty excited. I don't know. <laughs> I would no, I would not I would not like that. <laughs> uh Benji P D win for Bop says Spaceship Earth, but a history of Nintendo narrated by Reggie, housed into a giant Hanafuda playing card building that can structurally never be changed and cause issues for renovation for 50 plus years. <laughs> Do you remember how easy it was to climb ladders and jump over barrels? You could thank the Nintendans for that. <laughs> These are very good Epcot references. Thank you, Benji. Um, Snake one says, simple, a Luigi's, a Luigi's Mansion scary ride, ideally with a polter gust and interactive elements. I think it's in Disneyland Japan. There's a Monsters, Inc. ride where the vehicles have, like, um, flashlights attached. So you can kind Ooh. of, like, flash, yeah. So you can kind of take that idea and very easily expand that into something. I mean, just take that, mix it with Haunted Mansion. You have Luigi's Mansion as a ride. And that is actually probably one of the most sensible things to do. Plus, that's one you can actually just attach right onto, like, the periphery of uh, this current Nintendo world of all the Nintendo stuff already. Like, you just want to build another ride instead of having to worry about, well, now we have to, like, add Star Fox in here. So, like, we have to transition to this new land, or right? This one's like, here's the spooky mansion across from Bowser's Castle. There you go. Uh, next one here is from Lenny Cool Dick Denver, who says, I want a Star Tropics ride where it's a long line that leads to a door that actually takes you outside of the park. <laughs> and by the time you realize it, the door locks behind you with no way to get back into the park. And Nintendo ignores you for 29 years. That is the ideal Star Tropics. Yeah, that's, that's like authentic. It. That's really what you want to feel if you want to feel like Star Tropics. Yeah. Agante says, let me sign a waiver so I can fly around on a water jetpack that looks like Flood from Super Mario Sunshine. There's there's some like some clip from some news, like local news show where like they're doing like the uh, they're doing like the transition, like commercial. And there's some guy next to a guy playing those water jetpacks. The guy's like, this is WKBN and and uh, it's it's all going to be starting. And then the guy in the water jetpack so excited goes right now that he jumps and just like falls back face first into the water like the thing does not work <laughs> it's just incredible i love that i don't know why i think i'd last for 10 minutes <laughs> evo janice says eternal darkness ride with live sanity effects i don't know what that would entail but i'm sure they can figure it out oh yeah i mean it, universal is has uh done really well with halloween having these kind of uh scare houses and stuff like that and uh you know basically they hire people to mess with you uh, a lot of times i assume I don't know. I haven't done it. I'm a coward, but there's a lot of things they can do with that. Jamie H1224. He has Kirby Cafe or Mario Mini Golf crossed out. They says, wait, what am I saying? Give me Kirby's dream course. Let's go. Yeah, that would be incredible. I would love that. Okay. Yeah. If it was just like kind of actually just Kirby Mini Golf, I would still like it. Me too. Beef Hammer says, step one, construct a giant Bowser in the theme park. Step two, build an indoor ride with it themed around Bowser's inside story. Step three, figure out a suitable method for ex exiting Bowser, because I don't think the obvious one will fly. <laughs> I don't know why I wanted to say that like the monorail guy from The Simpsons. but I thought you were doing like a, a South Park character. Nah, well, I mean, look, I don't have many voices, obviously. Sure. Matilda's Bazoongas says, everyone already took all the good ideas, did they? <laughs> <laughs> and we need food for this theme park. So a cafe was hot mommies. For Nintendo games like Pyra, Mithra, Bayonetta, and of course Daisy, telling me what a bad boy I am. <laughs> Jesus, Gruntilda. Uh, this is the most emoji reactions for some yeah. reason. There you go. That's like, there's, like, <laughs> there's this is I'm joking. Don't write this down, Sean. There's our topic for two weeks from now. What Nintendo character do you most want to tell you you're a bad boy? <laughs> That's let's do it. No, let's not. The, <laughs> no, Jeff. Remember the uh, the waifu remember episode, the, the dark, waifu and the dark waifu episode. episode. Yeah, did we ever delete that from the internet? We got to go back and do something about it. <laughs> That's still up there. We're gonna, get, <laughs> we're gonna get in trouble someday. And all we did was read things. Uh, the vault of Nook starts off as uh, by Ed here starts off as an Animal Crossing ride, but when you reach the resident service building, you go deeper and deeper under the surface <laughs> into the secret vault of Tom Nook. The ride ends at the museum where Tom Nook and Blathers laugh as you discover that you and all the other passengers have become the newest exhibition in the museum. Slow burn psychological horror. Well, that's terrifying. That's, that's fun. Hey, Mike, uh, 
are you in the Discord right now as you're reading these? It was that sweeping thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, hover over it. It's your face. It's your the, the face when you shaved. <laughs> what? The I did a super reaction. I didn't know what it was gonna do. Like if you go over, like go over to the left. Mine is just like a laser beam of my face. But for yeah. you, you I splooge. You splooge everywhere, and then a mop has to clean it up. And it's underneath the one about Daisy. I'm I'm <laughs> gonna have to show this to people. So just keep talking. I'm gonna okay, bring this out of the video. Incredible. Uh. Let's see. DMC depressed me crying. Oh, wait, no. The first is Jat Jat's Bizarre Adventure says, going to build off what Saquon said, but I would love a Luigi's Mansion ride where it's like the Toy Story Midway Mania ride at Disney World. You're in the cart. Instead of shooting aliens, you're sucking them. They can what? make an effect of the air coming out. <laughs> okay. Oh, my bad. No, Jeff, no, Jeff, no, not that kind of stuff. Okay. Fine. All right. True. DMC depressed me crying says, basic beach pick here. But roller coasters based on Rainbow Road and other Mario Kart tracks, including the anti gravity sections from eight, would make for some great coasters. Like, I agree, but boy, we, you know, we got one Mario Kart ride. I understand it's not like a fast ride, like maybe some people want, but yeah, there you are. Oh, Metal Matt says F Zero bumper cars. Man, I haven't thought about bumper cars in a while. You got to show up the splooge? Yeah, I'm doing it right now. This is, yeah. Oh, Discord's weird. Discord is a weird, yeah. real thing that exists. There's just a, just the mess everywhere. Oh my god! Why is it like this? Jeff, right. Jeff what do you think about F Zero bumper cars? Uh, I actually love that idea. I think that'd be very, very, very fun. Uh, but I love bumper cars. And honestly, just a go kart ride where the things look like F Zero things. Go karts are so much fun. You could do a great. Go karts are fun. So yeah, because theme, theme theme parks have struggled to like plus uh, bumper cars. Uh, Disney had a decent one in Disney Quest, actually, where you was a kind of Buzz Lightyear themed. But otherwise, uh, go karts has been much more of a thing. Like, that's basically the Autotopia. Lewis AG says, theme a whole area based on the Wii Sports Resort Island and have people participate in the same activities the game has. They even have a tram throughout the area to get people from one place to another. I'm about to say, this is just a park. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the tram is nice. Turbo Sean says, remember that Final Fantasy 15 VR experience you guys love so much? That, but in an R Wing. Jesus Christ, Sean. Let me, uh, let me add a super You're disgusting. Real quick to this. Get a hold of yourself. There you go. No, it's uh, oh, it's different. That, that one was not the sploogey one. That oh, one got just, keep just doing the teleporter. The one. Me... Just keep doing it until it's sploogey. Oh, yeah. oh, we got the tell. Yeah. X Core says, not really a ride, but Doug Bowser randomly punches you in the gut and hands you a content strike for your YouTube channel, even if you don't have one. That's good. <laughs> And then JD Camp says Nintendo Labo roller coaster, totally safe and all cardboard. Love it. Well, there we go, Jeff. Ash guy just our... exploded. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> There's our community at work there. Very well good done, stuff. everybody. Good work. We've got some more super chats, though. Let's read those. All right. Let's get to it real quick. Uh, oh, no, no, I haven't read that one yet. So I'll start with that one. Um, the first super chat from uh, Mike Geezy. Thank you so much, Geezy. Uh, should I take my son to Mario in California or wait for Florida? How old is your son? What's their sort of um, tolerance and patience when it comes to queues? If they can stand in a bunch of queues and and like, and you guys are gonna like feel good about like spend a good solid five to six hours in Super Mario or Super Nintendo World where you go in first, hit the Mario Kart ride, and then you make your reservations for the re restaurant. So do those two things first. Uh, and as you come out of the Mario Kart ride, you go through the gift shops, so you have a chance to go to the gift shop. And then after that, if you are willing to stand in three 40-minute lines to do something pretty quick and then do the Bowser Jr. fight, uh, which is probably going to be another half an hour wait, um, then I think it's, yeah, I, I, my kids are six and four. That's too much waiting for them. So I'm not going to take them to Super Nintendo World in California. Once it's open in, in Orlando and they're a little bit older, definitely there'll be a, a, a bigger place. There'll be one more ride, and then we'll have all the options. Two more rides. And then well, one more ride for them because they're not going to go to the roller coaster. Right. Probably. Maybe. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. But it's like either way, it's like then there, there's a lot more in the Orlando uh, parks in general, so it'll be more worth it for us. So right, because in Orlando, that's going to be the third park uh, open there, plus a water park. In California, it's just that one park. There's, you know, some stuff for kids. And I'm thinking Disney there. as well. Like, Disney, Disney's easier. You can go to Disney. Yeah, right. it's bigger. Like, Disneyland is, like, further away from Universal Hollywood than Universal Orlando is from Disney World. Uh, now, the thing is, it's uh, two years away, uh, I think, at least. Right. So, there's, it's not imminent. But probably 2025 is what we're looking at for Epic yep. Universe, which is that third theme park. Yep. And honestly, we probably are going to get the kids out there before this. And then uh, we'll just then go I'm, back. We'll just go back. Yeah. 
Apparently, I missed the submission. Da, 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 da. You, you uh, read a super chat. I'll yeah, I will. I'm on it. Uh, from Uriel Delgado, an interactive Pikmin area. Cool concept to me. Uh, yeah, I, I think that'd be very cool. I think. Uh, well, having... What do you mean? How would you interact with them? I don't know. AR glasses. I'm just going to say that when I don't understand how to make stuff work. Yeah, <laughs> just AR. AR. AI. AI. Just get get the deep web. Get, yeah, the, get into the AI deep web. Deep web. Um, Joe S. That wasn't my idea. Why are you giving me shit? That was Uriel. Yell at Uriel. Uh, Joe S. Hello, Tommy Pickles and Chuckle fin Chucky Finster. I can't Wait, believe. who's who? This is important. <laughs> You're bald, so you're Tommy, right? <laughs> okay, good. That, yes, thank God. Okay, fine. Thank you. I'll be Chucky. I don't care. Um, I don't see, I don't see a submission from the Uncharted Wolf. Oh, Persona Wolf. Well, if you don't... Okay. He says, Closed down Super Nintendo World was a failure. Open Tetris World instead. It's, I hope it's based off the movie and not Tetris. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, well, I, so sorry. I, I cut off your super chat. Have you that. watched that movie? Tetris? I, for some reason, I was like... The, the, the Rugrats movie? Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, have you seen that too? Uh, yes. Uh, Tetris, no, I haven't seen that yet. Right. Joe S says, Hello, Tommy Pickles and Chucky Fenster. I can't believe the big Xenoblade 3 DLC Wave 4 launches in a week. What's your favorite DLC that's date was announced soon before it's released? Thanks. I am not going to be able to remember anything like that. Yeah, like, hmm. I mean, there's, because like the Smash Brothers ones they announced relatively soon before. Sure. So. Those were always fun. The Banjo Kazooie one, for some, even though I'm not the biggest Banjo Kazooie guy, that was really exciting. Like that, I don't know why I was really pumped for that one. The Sora Kingdom Hearts that was also great. No, it wasn't. Shut up, Jeff. No one cares. <laughs> you you've admitted like two times on the pod on like Giant Bomb recently that you like simple and clean. So I'm tired of it. What is simple? Wait. Uh, you, you didn't even know it. Wait, Sometimes I thought we were talking about the the. Oh, wait, 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 you've been you've been, you've been telling people you like a Kingdom Hearts song and you don't even know. No, because I, I I'm I'm conflating it with the um Outcast song. Uh, Outcast. Yeah. What is what am I thinking of? Uh, What's Outcast? Outcast is a, a, is a is it's like a Wu Tang. It's like a Wu Tang. Oh, it's like Wu Tang group. Yes, it's like Wu Tang. Yeah. So this is hilarious because there's I think it was Bailey so fresh or and so clean is what yeah, I'm conflating with. Some of your new with. friends from fandom were talking about how they love simple and clean, and you're like, yes, me too. And I was like. Do you? I don't think you do. <laughs> I, my brain was just like heard like that, and I'm like, wait, that doesn't sound. Yeah, but I do. I love that. Sure. You need to find. You need to apologize to them. That's okay. Emma and Bailey. Tell Who, them you're it was Emma and Bailey. Okay. Yes. I, one I, of them, or maybe both of them. I forget. I'll, I'll apologize to both of them. I'll I'll come clean. Simple and clean. Better. Absolutely. Simple as the way that you're making me feel tonight. Oh yeah, it's that's hard. I let 3, you go. Hold me. Okay. Uh, any more super chats? I'm glad that you said you don't know Outcast because people are way more mad about that than whatever I've said in the past about Simple and Clean. Uh, <laughs> Damn it! More super chat. No, yeah, we're all caught up in super chats. We're good. Thank you again. Thanks uh, again, Geezy, for that news uh, for the first super chat. I appreciate that. Yep. Uh, we, we got a little bit more podcasts here. Once if you want to get super chat in, you still have a little bit of a window here. But uh, yeah, have you been playing any uh, Nintendo games this Let's week? Let's see. I can. Boot up. I can actually play this now. It's actually working. So let's it's see. Uh, Disney Speed Storm. Speed, speed Storm. Uh, well, that's, how is this? I mean, there is a Switch version of that. Yes, there uh, is. Which, that's why I'm. That's why I was going to play it because I, I think I could speak to like it. Runs like a Switch version. So yeah, uh, I was actually playing it on PC for a while. It seemed. Yeah, I saw that you had 94 minutes played. I, I was mm. like going to do a thing where it's like I was going to take a screenshot of my friends who have played the game, and the only people who played it is you and Ash guy. And I was going, guess what game this is? And it's like, especially because it's YouTube, but like, yeah, just that new Disney game. <laughs> um, it this this seems pretty good. I'm, I, I kind of like yeah. looked at it a little bit. And I was like pretty interested. It seems uh, well made. It is game loft, and it's definitely going to have a lot of microtransactions, right? It does, and that's like thing. It looks great. It it controls really well. The Ooh, music is awesome because it's like. It's like kind of electronic techno mixed with Disney songs and sometimes even like the lyrical Disney songs. So it'll be like, I'll, you know, be a man from Mulan with this like, fun remix. Oh, it's awesome. Uh, Can, yeah, it, has, it has the most important features for me, which is steering assist and auto acceleration so that I can kids. hand this to the kids and yeah, they'll do fine. They know. That, is, they know. that is such a huge Nintendo has gotten so good at making their games scale without having difficulty sliders, really. And she's like, no, like, if you want to just go have fun in Mario Odyssey, you could just run around and have fun in Mario Odyssey. If you don't right. know what you're doing, 
you're still going to probably have a pretty good time playing that. And then with Mario Kart, it's like, okay, well, we'll just have the assist because that's a little bit different, but they're just right there. You can turn them on whenever you want, and it could just it's not going to be a penalty. It's just whatever. Uh, and it's like, oh, man, I could just totally just hand this to the kid, turn those things on, and walk away, and they're probably going to get first or second place on 50cc. It's It's fantastic. So I'm glad they have that. Yeah, but like you said, like, you know, it the free to play stuff is annoying. It's very like, here's the three currencies and they do different things. And like, which one's which and what game is loft. what? It's game lost. Right. Yeah. And it's like, all right, Figment is in this from Disney World from Epcot. I just want to play as him. Can I buy Figment? No, you could like maybe spend this currency on Ooh, this thing. Right. That okay. can maybe give you tokens. You get enough of those tokens. You can get it's like, right, fine, I'll be Donald, I guess. We'll level up Donald. Right, like, you know, you mean Toronto I wish I could just what? No, not Toronto, just Donald. Mm. Yeah. And I wish I could just like, you know, pick the characters, but you gotta level the characters up so that they can get better and assign them, you know, the pick crews or whatever, and you know, that stuff. And I just uh you know, I wish it was just, you know, all the characters are already balanced. You don't level them up because it's a free to play game thing. So. I yeah, I wish but, it was just straight up. Sixty dollars and yeah, I wish it was a sixty dollar Mario Kart DLC. clone. Yeah, just do that. I mean, God, that'd be. I mean, but that's just that'd not be amazing. Well, not the not what they're going to do anymore. And uh, I honest, if this is what it takes to get a game like this made, I, it does look pretty cool. It does. It is look, fun. Yes, it it controlled really well from the literally thirty seconds I just played a bit. I just would try to see what the power slide felt like, and it felt right. And it's like that's, that's a, good. A really good test to pass off the bat there. Um, but I'm like, just look, I'm like, oh yeah, there's so many fun things you could do with Disney. So I'm glad they're doing this. And I think, I think Disney's on a pretty good sort of, uh, role with, uh, like Disney Dreamlight Valley in this, where it's like, yeah, they're, they're using their IPs in a fun way for video games. So, so yeah, I, I don't know. How are you feeling overall about Disney's video games recently? I mean, they, they definitely are been doing a better job, uh, than they had in a while. Like this is fun. I thought Disney Dreamlight Valley was actually a pretty good time. Um, I think that that uh, Illusion Island or, or whatever it's called, the 2D platformer, that looks really interesting. And that is just going to be a game that will just be a $40 product. You buy it and you have it. So that's cool. I mean, you know, they fluctuate Disney in terms of like what their investment uh, is in games right now. This is seems like a high point. They're even doing things like, yeah, we'll like let Ron Gilbert make a new Monkey Island. Sure, we have the rights to that. We'll we'll be involved. So, you know, and I know John Drake's doing a lot of that and uh, it's appreciated as a Disney fan. Yep, I'm gonna um try to ha- maybe talk to those Illusion Island guys here pretty soon. Hopefully, we'll see. That'll be. I talked to them. They're they're good guys. Yeah. Um, I I do have bad news for you though. Oh, oh God, what? Uh, this game is not going to perform as well as Mario Kart, and so you're gonna have to deal with Dan saying that Mario is more popular. Yeah, than Yeah, I don't Mouse. know exactly. That's like not how it works. Yep, that doesn't matter. <laughs> that not, none of that matters. It's not really what it matters. Yeah, no, whatever. Doesn't, doesn't but, matter. Whatever. I'll, can I just tell Dan I agree with him? It's fine if that will help him reconsider his ridiculous Mario 3D World isn't a core Mario game thing. There are there are no concessions. There's, There's no bargaining. Be. He doesn't do that. It's just he will. No, he can be. No, I don't believe it. I think oh, he can be a reasonable you're the, person. You're on a dangerous path, and I cannot You'll follow. Him, I'll fix him. I cannot I'm follow. fix him. You been playing anything else, Jeff? Uh, I was going to check. There was an, another new game out that I'm like, I, I'm gonna probably play it a little bit. This, but I want to do a uh, uh, Minecraft Legends. I want to do a quick look of that, but I'm not gonna have enough yeah. time to like get into there. That's another one that's out on Switch that I want to like check into. But it's uh, on Switch. Yeah, it is on Switch. I kind of want to see how it runs on there. Uh, but that I was, that's basically where I'm because I like was playing so much Dead Island too that I didn't have a chance to check out a lot of these things. But I'm like I'm kind of curious, like oh yeah, what else has happened on Switch right now? And I'm like I looked like oh yeah, both those games just came out. That's a pretty big deal. But really, it's all about it's going to be Advance Wars here in a couple of days. I'm going to download it the second it's out. I'll be spending a lot of time with that. So that uh, right now it's kind of just biding time until that. You know, yeah, that I, sounds not that not, like I'm not like I don't do this like legit. Uh, I don't think I've heard about that game leaking, Advance Wars. Oh, well, I didn't one person like get it way back when. Right. But that was like, like, yeah, it was like some I can't remember exactly yeah. how it worked. But yeah, they got like some yeah. digital version and it worked. And as long as they went offline, it could just kept working. I don't, know if they, I don't know if they sent on any codes. Yeah, maybe it did. Maybe they maybe, have. Yeah, maybe I I still, like, I like the retail get, versions are the, always the thing that actually leaks. So oh, uh, it's X Core's right. The pixel remasters are coming to switch tomorrow. And I'm like actually excited about those now because uh, they fixed the font. Like, you're you're going to make time for them? Maybe, maybe I'll like try to play 
Final Fantasy 1 again first, actually. That'd be kind of neat. It's been a while since I played Final Fantasy 1. So okay. I might make it a little time. We'll see. I, I have been kind of killing time on my Switch. So, you know, I got the Mega Man Battle Network collection. I was playing it a bit. I don't know if I'm going to be de- keeping a whole ton of time. Those, that. Are, those are pretty lengthy games, right? The, them, you know, they're RPGs. There's six of them. The, the thing is, and, um, you know, James kind of explained this to you. They're talky, and I don't mind talking to my RPG, but it's like Pokemon. Like, that's the reading level of this kind of thing, right? Sure. There's no real, like, the story is just, like, we are friends. Friends are good. Late to school, haha, bad guy, right? It is, like, first grade level reading stuff. Like, if Final Fantasy is fourth grade level reading, like, it's still, like, nah, it's just not deep or anything. But it's still, like, less mind-numbing than this stuff can be. If you are not a literal child anymore. And look, I like a lot of things made for children. And it's weird because the combat is incredibly engaging. It can be incredibly strategic and very intense. It can require a lot of like fast uh, reflexes and stuff like that. So the kind of like juggling of these two things can be a little bit bizarre of like this, Hmm. like not even I don't even Saturday morning cartoon, more like Nick June, like weekday morning sure, cartoon kind okay, of story wow. kind of thing. Uh, and then like, you know, card, turn based, uh, grid based action, real time combat system uh, mixed with that. It's it is fun, but it is kind of like, I, you know, I, I don't know if I can deal with these literal like seven year olds or whatever they are in their problems. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, I've always been curious about those games, but I would not like them. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't be able to get past it. It's not like you can easily skip the, the dialogue. And sure. Stuff like that, so. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, OK. Yeah. But there, there, there are good games that I think if I did yeah. like just kind of go through it, I would I would still enjoy it. And sometimes I am for and there was something that light. I mean, look, it's, I mean, I've, I've said the same thing about Pokemon games recently for a long time. I could still do that stuff. And I am like finally at a point. Oh, Sean says you can skip every cutscene. Huh? That's not what Jan made. So. Well, whatever. But uh, even with Pokemon games, I'm like, I just can't with this kind of this level of dialogue anymore anymore. It, like where there's both a lot of it and it's nothing. You know, I can do yeah. one or the other. <laughs> sure. But, yeah, it's, okay. it's a bit much. Uh, You've been playing anything else? Contra games, actually. I don't like, I, I never got that Contra collection. And that was like pretty heavily discounted on sale. So and I, I haven't like gone super deep in the Contra series. I played a lot of them, but never beat them. Like I basically I played a lot of hardcore because that's great. And that's just on NSO. Right. But like I, I finally played through Alien Wars and Contra one. I'm like halfway through Super C. And yes, I am Jesse like crazy. I am just using save states. Yeah. And, are are uh, you uh, doing like the 30 lives code or anything? Or for, I mean, for Contra one, I did, but it doesn't really matter because I'm being such a little shit that I want right, to okay. quick save. Even if I lose my spreader gun, you know? Sure. That makes sense. You know? Yeah. I mean, Man. that game's so hard. I, I know They're that hard. I, I know that Dan and Vinny did a, uh, uh, this is the run for that, uh, where they tried to, I think they tried to beat it with like three lives. I never really watched that series, but it's like, they tried to beat that whole game on, on three lives and tried to figure it out. And I was like, man, that's tough. Um, I think for Contra one, I could do it. Uh, uh, Contra three is pretty tough. That'd be pretty ridiculous. Those games are all really pretty hard. They, they made them difficult pretty and they're not like, um, Ghouls and Ghosts or whatever, go yeah, or Ghosts and Goblins. Well, or... But they're similar. because I mean, what especially Ghouls and Ghosts? What that really is? It's like a memorization game. Yes. It's not actually about reflexes no, anymore. Right. At that point, it is like Contra has so much that. that you just know. Yes. Contra has some of that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. for sure. Yeah, it's been fun. I've been kind of just enjoying going through uh, some of those games and at least being able to see everything in there. But yeah, basically killing time for some of these other big releases. That I are mean, it's coming. coming. This is it. Switch. I mean, we're we're gonna get yeah. Advanced Wars and then. Fancy. I mean, but then wait, Zelda. what? When does when does Tears of the Kingdom come out again? It's, I, it's I always just tell myself it's I always just tell myself May because I'm not able to like think. That I know, but we're like ahead. two weeks away. We're not even two weeks away from May. It's like May twelfth. It's not even late May, Jeff. Holy it's shit! Like three weeks. We're gonna be there Weird. in no time. So yeah, That's it's advanced bizarre, wars, yeah. and then we're gonna blink, and it's gonna be Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, time. if so. we weren't in jail, we'd be like get code in a week or something. I, for real, honestly, yeah. And That's hard to th- that's hard to imagine. Yeah. It is. It's hard to think about. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> did we get any any more super chats? I'm here? looking. It doesn't look like it. We got the week, so. so we're all caught up on the super chats. Thanks to everybody who sent those in this week. It was a lot of fun answering those. Yeah. 
We appreciate everyone. I think we're actually caught up now. Then I think we're ready uh, to wrap this thing up, Jeff. All right, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm hitting play the button. That music. All right. Well, hey, we got uh, more uh, connectivity compadres. We got to play some more Four Swords Adventures tomorrow on Giant Bomb at yes, 1 p.m. Pacific, I believe. Right? One, no, 1 p.m. Eastern. 1 p.m. Eastern. 1 p.m. Eastern. Oh, okay, 1 p.m. Eastern. Gotcha. Yeah, we we'll say yeah. I, I have. Uh, I got. I have to pick up uh, uh, Emmy from school tomorrow sense, at three. Actually. So uh, Steph started that new job, so we're kind of figuring some stuff out there. So I definitely can't do it the later no. time. So uh, I see, yeah, 1 p.m. Eastern. That's 1 p.m. Right. Eastern. Yep. yep. So d tune in oh. for that. It's a lot of fun. I mean, you're listening to this show. There's no reason not to watch us play. Yeah. It, it, like, First of all, we're having a really good time. But it's like it's a game that I think most people probably have not played. And this It's is, like, impressive that it works, that we're, you know, we're able to use Dolphin and we can actually like from you know, you know all these different places use the internet right well you know fingers crossed it'll continue working but so far so good we're surprisingly well we're anyway. surprisingly well and we have a backup method in case we need to switch to parsec all right everybody bye drivebomb.com check that out tomorrow Stop. also we're by react says it's indie world yeah indie we'll watch world. that indie world and in indie world right after game s morning tomorrow Yeah, well, I fucked your mom. <laughs>